In our research, we really were interested to see how the media is positioning the European Union. It is argued by media scholars that if, um, your, if an international partner reported with a local hook, when readers and viewers can relate to issues, events, uh, then this uh, news has a higher impact. For example, the war in Afghanistan report in the German newspaper, but as soon as it's a report about three German soldiers killed in the war in Afghanistan, this news item will be remembered, it will attract attention. So the same goes for the European Union in Asian context. So we, re we recognized four categories. The first one, reporting EU in European or EU context. For example, appointment of a new European Commission. The second angle, um, uh, speaking about European Union, we did differentiate about EU being reported in EU context, fewer EU context, EU news being reported in the member state context, for example, failure of EU uh, constitutional uh, referendum in Ireland, and then member state news which reference the European Union, for example, a story about Danish uh, cartoon and then EU reaction in that particular argument. We did not look at member states coverage in the context of member states, so I want to be clear from the very beginning. The second focus of domesticity is what we call third countries. This is when EU news were reported not in Asian context and not in the context of EU member states. Uh, on the next slide, you see that where, where EU is involved, mostly in, through the eyes of Asian media, 12 locations in the Middle East, the greatest number of articles, even more than about EU involvement with Asia. The second largest arena was EU neighbors, and then North America and Africa. And if you look at the number of stories, Africa had only 40, and probably it's not what EU is thinking, because obviously EU Africa vector seems to be pretty much straight. The next um, focus of domesticity is local. When EU news is reported in local context, for example, EU introduces new standards of safety, and this affects local toy making industry. And um, final, regional news. For example, Singaporean paper talks about EU delivering aid to tsunami affected countries in Southeast Asia. What we discovered, most of the news are report, uh, they were, uh, is reporting European Union in the, in the um, in the third country context, somewhere out there in the world, and regional context was the least visible. In our research, we also tried to evaluate the visibility, not only in terms of how many pieces of news, but how intense was the representation of the European Union. Was it the European Union presented as a main actor, as an actor acting with somebody else, as a secondary one, or as a minor, a reference just in passing, a brief one? What we discovered as you can see, majority of reporting comes in the minor uh, degree of intensity. So we have a very particular visibility in summary. We have a relatively low volume, we have weak intensity of representation, and this reporting in position in somewhere out there in the world. This particular type of representation points to the EU as, as a marginal international actor. That's how it's presented by media. Yesterday we were talking with my colleague about the sources of EU news stores, which is an important point because sources make the news. What we found out, there were again certain patterns. Northeast Asian locations and South Asian locations relied more on its own correspondence, either writing from inside the country or being posted to Europe. Southeast Asian locations, on the other hand, relied more on international wires. Which wires were the most popular? Reuters. Um, AFP, AP, and Bloomberg. Again, more wealth, the wealthy news outlets usually have money to have correspondence on the ground or support. Usually uh, less wealthy, um, they tend to use more agencies. The agencies is an interesting point because Reuters is a dominant source of news, but we shouldn't forget it's a British source of news. And it, it, the, the reporting uh, still carries certain British undertones to how the process of European integration is presented. AFP was popular because its English service was writing in simpler English than some of the English or American sources. And AP is an American source as well as Bloomberg, so we're talking about American perspective on uh, European integration. So they're actually not just Europe, international agencies, they're particular international agencies. Interestingly, that Asian news services in wires were not used as a prime source. What kind of actor is the European Union? Well, I'm sure you are all familiar with colorful descriptions of the European Union as an um, economic giant, but military dwarf and political pygmy. I want to underline they were descriptions coined by European scholars. 
what was that was that reflected in the reportage? That's why I put a question mark after breaking the stereotypes. What we found out that if we look at the share of news, political representations in a total sample were actually more visible than economic representations. All in all, because now we have more new, we have um, new three new countries on board. Uh, obviously, the this, the distribution of topic is different in every location. However, in several locations like Vietnam, India, uh, I'm sorry, in, the, um, in Vietnam, Japan, China, Indonesia, and the Philippines, in the popular newspaper, more than 50% of reporting was actually about you as a political actor. Does it mean that the ideas about you are changing, or does it mean that political news is actually sexier and easier to sell? On this note, in um, in Hong Kong, sorry, in India and in Macau, there are actually still uh, economic topics where the most um, uh, the most in. in no way we have our study as blames the media study. And um, in your handouts, we actually provided several views of the newsmakers about how hard is it to sell the European Union news. So we're very realistic that there is diversity of media landscapes. Um, we talk about different relations between media and government in each case. So you are welcome to have um, a look at those quotes. I'll just mention the three trends. The first idea was the first belief Newsmakers believe that demand for the EU news is low. The second one, that EU diversity is um, making harder to report and consume EU news. And finally, a more encouraging one, many of them believed that there is um, a potential, that EU coverage has a potential to grow. Media elites were just one of the cohorts we interviewed in our study. And the other three were political, business, and civil society. So we asked our elites what is the perceived importance of the European Union in present and in the future? And they, um, they had to raise it from one to five. One was not important, five was very important. And then they had to describe there were certain quotes there too. So what we found out in the present, the average was 3.5. But the tendency was that in the perceptions of elites, the importance of the EU was seen as growing. And if you look, mainland China elites were the most optimistic, both in the present and in the future. 